did you know that the legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is more than just a tale of a hero saving the world? Released in the year 2000, this game has become a classic among gamers due to its dark themes and emotional depth. As we know, Link's journey in Ocarina of Time saw him become an adult and then, at the end of the game, return to his childhood. But, but in Majora's Mask, the direct sequel, he is once again forced to face the realities of adulthood and the weight of his responsibilities. At the beginning of the game, we see a somber Link, suggesting that he might be grieving something. The loss of his childhood could be a possible source of his grief. Link's fairy companion, Navi, and her absence in Majora's Mask could symbolize Link's loss of innocence and the need to face the challenges of adulthood without the guidance of a carefree childhood. Throughout the game, Link faces various challenges, including the impending doom that is the falling moon and the personal traumas of the characters he encounters. These challenges force him to confront the darker aspects of life and the harsh realities of mortality. So what does all of this mean? How does Majora's Mask explore these themes in an unique way? Beneath Majora's Mask's surface lies a narrative about the stages of grief, a psychological model that describes the different emotional states people go through when dealing with loss. At the heart of the game lies the theory of the stages of grief, which was first introduced by the psychiatrist Elizabeth Cobbler Ross in her 1969 book on death and dying. Kabler Ross proposed that there are five different stages of grief denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. These stages don't necessarily occur in a specific order, and people may experience them in different ways, but it provides a framework for understanding how people cope with loss. Through Link's journey in Termina, we see him move through each of these stages as he comes to terms with the loss of a dear friend, his childhood, or anything really. This video will examine the stages of grief as they appear in Majora's Mask, using examples from the game to illustrate how Link's journey reflects the emotional turmoil that comes with loss. It will look at how the game's different regions and characters represents the different stages and how Link's interaction with them helped them come to terms with their grief. In other words, as we explore the world of Termina, we'll see how Link's journey through the stages of grief mirrors the experience of those around him. This is a powerful theme that resonates with many players, and it's one of the reasons that Majora's Mask is considered to be one of the most thought-provoking and emotionally resonant games in the Zelda series. Join me as we dive deep into the world of Termina and uncover the secrets of this beloved game. But before we start, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have enjoyed the video so far. Alright, let's dive right in. Denial is the first stage of grief, and is prominently illustrated in the bustling clock town. This stage of grief is characterized by an inability or unwillingness to accept the reality of a loss or impending disaster. It often serves as a temporary defense mechanism, providing a buffer against the pain and shock of a situation. In the game, clock town's residents find themselves in a dire predicament as the menacing moon hovers closer with each passing day, threatening to destroy their world. Despite the imminent catastrophe, the townspeople continue to go about their daily lives, planning the annual carnival of time and attending their usual tasks, stubbornly refusing to acknowledge the looming danger. The colorful and upbeat music in Clock Town emphasize this denial. Bright hues and upbeat tunes contrast with the menacing moon highlighting the townsfolk's refusal to recognize danger. This juxtaposition creates an eerie atmosphere, underscoring denial throughout the game. <laughs> this collective denial is evident in the attitudes of various characters throughout Clock Town, each demonstrating their own unique ways of coping with the threat. This is best exemplified in the Major's office, where Muto, the carnival committee leader, embodies denial in Clock Town. Convinced that a falling moon is merely a rumor, he disregards the reality. As the moon nears, denial becomes harder to maintain, and by the third day's night, most committee members evacuate, leaving only stubborn Muto behind. But denial is evident in many places. The master at the sword training center believes he can cut the moon into pieces, showcasing his inability to face reality. On the last night, usually confident, 
he's fear-stricken and barricades himself in his dojo. The punctual postman also denies the situation, thinking he can maintain his routine and deliver mail, despite the impending doom. Even the stockpile inn is in denial too. Innkeeper Anju hopes her missing fiancé will return before the world ends. She clings to the idea that they'll escape together, ignoring the harsh reality. As the player explores Clocktown and interacts with its residents, they are exposed to the complexities and consequences of denial as a response to loss and fear. The portrayal of denial in Clocktown serves as a reminder that denial can be a powerful and pervasive force, affecting not only individuals, but entire communities. However, it also emphasizes that denial is not a sustainable response to loss or danger as it prevents meaningful action and the necessary steps toward resolution. By exploring the intricacies of denial in the context of Clocktown, Majora's Mask encourages players to reflect on their own experience with denial and the importance of facing reality in order to move forward in the grieving process. The in-depth exploration of denial in Clocktown provides a valuable understanding of this stage of grief and the potential consequences of avoiding reality. Through this narrative, players can appreciate the importance of confronting loss and fear in order to progress toward healing and growth. Anger, the second stage of grief, is vividly represented in the Southern Swamp region. In this stage, emotions like frustration, irritation and rage are common responses to the pain of loss. These feelings may be directed inward or projected onto others, often resulting in misplaced blame or aggression. In the game, the Southern Swamp is home to the Decus, a race of plant-like creatures deeply connected to nature. Their habitat has been poisoned, and the Deku Princess, the daughter of the Deku King, has been kidnapped. As the kingdom struggles to cope with these losses, the Deku King's anger reaches a boiling point. The Deku King's rage is misdirected at an innocent monkey who had been trying to help the princess. Blinded by his anger and unwilling to listen to reason, the Deku King orders the monkey to be punished, believing him to be responsible for his daughter's disappearance and the pollution of the swamp. The pollution of the southern swamp can be seen as a symbol of anger in several ways. For instance, the toxic environment can be seen as a manifestation of the anger and frustration felt by the swamp inhabitants towards the outside world, which has allowed the swamp to become so polluted and overrun with dangerous creatures. As Link arrives in the southern swamp, he witnesses the effects of unchecked anger and its consequences on both the individual and the community. Link's intervention to find the true source of the swamp's pollution, Odolva, and rescue the Deku Princess allows the Deku King to realize his mistake and confront his anger, ultimately leading to a resolution. In the broader context of grief, the portrayal of anger in the Southern Swamp serves as an important reminder of the potential destructiveness of this emotion when it remains unaddressed. It highlights the necessity of recognizing, understanding and managing one's anger in order to move through the grieving process and avoid causing further harm to oneself or others. The Woodfall narrative also emphasizes the importance of empathy and support during the grieving process. As Link helps the Deku King confront his anger and resolve the situation, it demonstrates how compassion and understanding can be a powerful catalyst for healing and growth. However, despite Link's eventual success, he must restart the three-day cycle with the Song of Time erasing his accomplishments and evoking anger and frustration. Link's loss of his identity as the hero of time and inability to restore lasting healing to Termina parallel emotions felt after losing a loved one. Majora's Mask challenges Link with mourning Navi's loss and, at the same time, grappling with his diminished status as a hero. Bargaining the third stage of grief can be found in the Snowhead region. In this area, the spirit of the deceased Goron hero, Ermani, is unable to accept his untimely death. 
Bermani had been a great protector of his people, the Gorons, and he had been trying to save them from the harsh winter and the evil that plagued their land. After his death, he's trapped in a state of emotional turmoil, desperate to find a way to continue his duty. As Link encounters Dermani's spirit, who witnesses the Goron hero struggle to come to terms with his death. Dermani pleads with Link to bring him back to life, bargaining for another chance to protect his people and fulfill his purpose. This interaction highlights the desire to negotiate and find alternative solutions when faced with loss and the inability to accept the harsh reality of a situation. Throughout this stage, Dharmani's bargaining represents a broader theme of how we, as humans, often attempt to negotiate with fate or a higher power in order to alleviate our pain and suffering. By helping Dharmani and using the Goron mask to adopt his form, Link allows the Goron hero to achieve a sense of closure and peace, ultimately enabling him to accept his fate and the limitation of his situation. The Goron Elder's son plays a significant role in representing the bargaining stage of grief in Majora's Mask. As the Goron tribe faces the harsh conditions in the frozen Snowhead region, the Elder's son is left alone and scared, waiting for his father's return. Distraught and desperate for comfort, he continuously cries out for his father, embodying the bargaining process that many experience during grief. In an attempt to con the young Goron, Link plays the Goron lullaby, a soothing melody that helps ease his pain and anxiety. This moment represents the bargaining that often occurs as individuals seek to alleviate their distress during times of loss and uncertainty. The Elder's Son's situation serves as a powerful reminder of the vulnerability that grief can bring and the desperate attempts that one might take to regain a sense of normalcy and comfort. Through the portrayal of the Goron Elder's Son, the game effectively captures the essence of bargaining in the grieving process. The snow and ice of the Snowhead region symbolize emotional numbness and isolation often associated with the bargaining stage of grief. As the Goron tribe faces the loss of their hero and endures the unrelenting winter storm, the frozen landscape reflects the emotional state of the characters trapped in a cold and yielding cycle. The ice, snow and chilling winds create an environment where it's difficult for the Gorons to connect and support each other, mirroring the internal struggles and isolation that can arise during the bargaining process. The eventual melting of the snow and ice signifies the thawing of emotional barriers and the importance of connection and warmth in overcoming grief. Depression the fourth stage of grief is symbolized in the Great Bay area. This stage is characterized by overwhelming sadness, despair, and the feeling of being emotional weighed down. In the game, we witness these emotions through the story of Mikau, the fallen Zora guitarist. Mikau's personal tragedy begins with the kidnapping of his bandmate Lulu's eggs, which represents their future hope and the continuation of their musical legacy. Despite his best efforts, Mikau fails to recover the eggs and protect his friend, ultimately succumbing to his injuries. His spirit is left tormented by his perceived failure and the inability to fulfill his promises. As Link encounters Mikau, he witnesses the Zora guitarist's profound depression. Mikau's pain is palpable as he laments the loss of the eggs and the dire consequences it holds for their band, the Indiegogos, and their people. Lulu's story in Majora's Mask poignantly embodies the stage of depression in the grieving process. As the lead singer of the popular Zora band, the Indigo Goes, Lulu faces immense sorrow when her precious eggs are stolen, causing her to lose her voice. Overwhelmed with sadness and a sense of helplessness, she isolates herself on the shores of Great Bay, staring blankly into the ocean, unable to sing or interact with others. Her desolation is a powerful representation of the depression that can manifest during grief. As Link retrieves her stolen eggs, the music they produce together restores Lulu's voice, symbolizing the slow but steady process of healing from the depths of despair. Through Lulu's journey, Majora's Mask conveys the debilitating effects of depression while also offering a message of hope and the potential for recovery. The Great Bay Area, with its somber atmosphere and the ongoing struggles faced by the Soras, further emphasizes the pervading sense of hopelessness. 
the vast ocean of Great Bay represents the overwhelming emotions and depths of sadness associated with the depression stage of grief. The ocean, with its powerful currents and hidden dangers, mirrors the internal struggles of the characters in this region as they grapple with feelings of helplessness, despair and loss. As Link dons the Sora mask and ventures into the depths of the ocean, his journey symbolizes the process of confronting and navigating through the darkness of depression. The eventual healing of the region and the resolution of the character's emotional turmoil signifies the possibility of finding hope and emerging stronger from the depths of despair. <laughs> Acceptance, the final stage of grief, is skillfully portrayed in the mysterious Ikana Canyon. This stage is characterized by coming to terms with the reality of loss, finding peace and moving forward. In Ikana Canyon, we are introduced to the spirits of an ancient kingdom that has experienced a tragic history of war, destruction and despair. The desolate landscapes of Ikana Canyon serves as a powerful symbol of acceptance in Majora's Mask. This barren and forsaken region, once a flourishing kingdom, is now inhabited by wandering spirits and remnants of a bygone era. The haunting atmosphere and lifeless surroundings emphasize the inevitability of loss and the need to come to terms with the impermanence of existence. As Link ventures through the desolate landscape, he encounters various characters who struggle to accept their past and are seeking redemption. One such character is Captain Kira, a giant skeleton soldier found in Ikana Canyon. They serve as a poignant example of acceptance in Majora's Mask. Once a powerful military leader, Kira has been reduced to a restless spirit haunting the desolate canyon. When Link encounters him, he is able to awaken the soldier's memory of his past and his duty to protect Ikana. By engaging in a battle with Kira and ultimately proving his worth, Link helps him find peace and come to terms with his fate. In this moment, Captain Kira's acceptance of his past and current state symbolizes the importance of facing our own losses and accepting the impermanence of life. Through this powerful encounter, the game reminds the players of the healing potential of acceptance and the necessity of embracing change as an integral part of the human experience. The tale of King Igos Du Ikana and his two learned knights further exemplifies acceptance in Majora's Mask. These once proud figures, now reduced to lingering spirits, have witnessed the fall of their kingdom and the disintegration of their legacy. Despite their initial resistance to Link's presence, they gradually recognize the weight of their past mistakes and their responsibility in the kingdom's decline. As Link confronts them, the king and his knight engage in a battle to test his strength and resolve. Upon witnessing Link's determination, they come to accept their own roles in the kingdom's demise and decided to aid him in his quest. In teaching Link the Elegy of Emptiness, the king and his knight demonstrate their acceptance of the past and the need to move forward. This poignant encounter highlights the transformative power of acceptance and its capacity to bring closure and healing to both the living and the dead. The acceptance eventually displayed by the spirits of Ikana not only signifies an understanding of their own fate, but also represents a broader theme of embracing the inevitability of change and the passage of time. In doing so, they can find a sense of peace and purpose in supporting Link on his journey to save Termina. Through the exploration of Ikana Canyon, players of Majora's Mask are reminded that acceptance is a crucial step in overcoming grief and loss. By acknowledging this, one can begin to heal and move forward. The portrayal of acceptance in Ikana Canyon serves as a fitting end to the emotional journey through the stage of grief in Majora's Mask. The titular Majora's Mask represents the chaos that can ensue when grief is not addressed properly. Link's battle against it is a metaphor for overcoming grief and emphasizes the importance of empathy and support, highlighting the need to address grief and heal emotional wounds. The dawn of the new day at the end of Majora's Mask represents hope, renewal and a fresh start after overcoming the challenges and emotional turmoil experienced throughout the game. Symbolically, 
the dawn signifies the end of darkness and the beginning of light, paralleling the resolution of the game's conflicts and the healing of the character's grief. After Link's arduous journey through Termina and his exploration of the various stages of grief, the dawn serves as a reward for his perseverance and celebration of the growth he has undergone. It marks the end of the three-day cycle and the prevention of the moon's catastrophic impact, representing the success of Link's efforts and his ability to restore balance and peace to the world. The characters whom Link has aided throughout his journey can now rebuild their lives and find solace in the wake of their losses. The dawn is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there is always the potential for a new beginning. In conclusion, Majora's Mask masterfully explores the five stages of grief, offering players a thought-provoking and emotionally rich experience. Whether it's the sorrowful music of the Song of Healing or the haunting imagery of the Kana Valley, Majora's Mask presents a world that is both beautiful and haunting, forcing players to confront the harsh realities of loss and the inevitability of change. By examining the symbolism and emotions found in the game's regions and storyline, we can appreciate the unique power of Majora's Mask in presenting a meaningful and relatable journey through loss and healing. As we conclude this video, it's worth noting that the game's director, Eiji Aoyunuma, have mentioned that they didn't intentionally incorporate this specific theory on grief during its development. However, this doesn't diminish the value of players discovering these themes within the story. One can argue that the true beauty of art lies in its capacity to be interpreted and experienced uniquely by each individual. As we part ways, I hope this video has provided you with a new perspective on Majora's Mask and its emotional narrative. If you found this analysis engaging, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more insightful content like this. Thank you for joining me on this journey through grief, healing and the power of storytelling in the world of Majora's Mask. I have been honest, thank you for watching.